You like that, huh? I do. Yeah, off the community tab. Uh, this was community tab, right? <laughs> you were just like night and day. What? <laughs> you got you got all that bass in your voice for the coming in hot, and you're like, coming in off the community tab. We have Wilson! Sorry, you may go. I'm gonna sit over here with my camouflage. Why do why you make me sound like a character from the Fairly Odd Parents? <laughs> I've never even seen that. You kids, you've never seen the Fairly Odd Parents? I'm too busy watching Octonauts. Oh, I'm sorry for your soul, buddy. Are you kidding me? I learned so much about fish. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe now! <laughs> didn't see that I, coming, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> uh, can I make it? Can I tell you a story real quick? Tell me a story real quick. So, my kid, the one day, we used to go over to my mother in law's. That's where he spent all the, you know, before he was going to school. That's who would watch him every day. So, the one day we're, you know, we're talking and, and something comes up. And he's like, oh yeah, that's a dodecahedron. I look at my wife. She goes, I don't know what that is. And I was like, <laughs> I. I so I go, buddy, what's a dodecahedron? Gives me the like the textbook definition of a dodecahedron. I was like, what? Where'd you get this from? He's like, uh, Nickelodeon. What show are you watching? Uh, Team Umizoomi. Oh, uh, Umi's. Oh my Team god. Team Umizoomi. He's like, oh, yeah, it's a dodecahedron. Like, Where'd you get that? I hate it. I what hate show? that because that opening theme gets stuck in your head all day. Yeah, Team Umizoomi. Uh, Umizoomi. <laughs> you. Yeah. Thank you. How come you're good at doing voices like that, but everything sounds like Joe Pesci around? You come here on the bed, so my please stop. Buddy. Nobody needs this. Nobody needs this in their life. I don't appreciate Why did I put a notebook in front of the face of somebody driving? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bills fan 7883 uh, saying Tyrell Dodson could be this year's Levi Wallace. Now, a lot of people might not even know who Tyrell Dodson is. I like Tyrell Dodson. He was a uh, un undrafted free agent from Texas A&M, linebacker, 6'1", 230, ran a 4'6", 24 reps on the bench, almost a 10-foot broad jump. He is, he has all the physical tools that you would want, mm -hmm. but some questions on his instincts, mm -hmm. some questions on his hips. He doesn't really have a good knee bend sometimes. He gets a little sticky. Okay. Which is why he be he's better at a Sam than a middle. Okay. Uh, but a guy that, like you say many times, if you put you put and you put him in the right system, you think he could be a monster. And he's already coming in with the physical tools. Well, a couple things, right? So, 105 tackles as a sophomore, wonderful production for a sophomore. Yes, love that, right? 70 tackles as a junior. Not all him, though. Not all him. I know, but why would you come out after that? Right? Because he's not. No, why did you? Right, because he's he came out as an underclassman. So after his junior year, well, there was he declared. A, there was a there was a record at the draft this year. Yeah, 111. 111 came out, um, which is madness to me. That's yeah, crazy. It's, they it's, gotta stop this. Was it 256 total? Like, come on. Man. Yeah, it's uh, there's a there's a very interesting correlation between players not making it through their rookie contracts and the rise of underclassmen drafted. It's a very fascinating stipulation because if you it's very fascinating statistical breakdown because if you look at the underclassmen and how many of them finish their contracts versus the four-year player the, the player finished their their college career the odds are that the underclassmen is going to get cut first but they're often drafted higher very strange. They're younger right yeah very strange but it's only a year well, it's, not, it's, not really. it's very really. very strange not really though I don't know yeah you got a point what are you looking up? Uh, Vacation spots. What's wrong with you? Yeah, I want to go. Clearly, I got the body for surfboard. Uh, so you're playing. You're playing. <laughs> I built like one. I might as well ride one. <laughs> <laughs> Be like a javelin. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see games played for Tyrell Dodson. That's what I wanted to see. So uh, he played. Uh, he played as a true freshman, which is interesting. Okay. So he had the physical tools coming into college. Uh, plays at Texas A&M, so in the SEC, uh, is A&M SEC? Yeah, A&M's SEC. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's covering speed all the time. Right. So it could be one of those scenarios where he's not usually 
mean, because he has trouble in coverage. That's one of the things he does have trouble with. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're asking him to be a Sam linebacker to clean up junk coming out that kicks over to him, he could be a guy that can do that. However, it doesn't go through the tackle. He'll, right. he'll pop or he'll lunge, mm-hmm. and he won't drive through the ball carrier. Well, I mean, yeah, I, it's, I get that. You also look at his sack numbers. He had a half a sack last year. But he played all 13 games, so there was a there, there was a pretty significant drop-off from 105 tackles to 70 tackles. But again, I'm curious why he declared for the draft after having a 30% drop in production and having a half a sack. Do you remember the... Uh, yeah. Do you Did remember? A&M change coaches? I'd have to look. But my point is this. They didn't have to. They probably could have changed defensive coaches. Who knows? But the problem is this. Um, remember what you told me about these guys that rate what k- kids would come out as? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you're projected as a third rounder. Yeah. But if you're one of the first ten guys that, come, that declares and they tell you you're a third rounder and then a hundred more players declare. Yeah, the and college advisory board. They don't change, board. Col- okay, yeah. college advisory board. They don't change what your status is. Right, yeah, so the way the college advisory board works, and we're just, this is off a previous episode from forever ago that probably a hundred people watched. Um, not, not a lot, it was yeah, more it was for early. Us. Yeah, this one was kind of <laughs> early. But the way that it works, and I'm just gonna give you the Reader's Digest version, is uh, they don't tell you where in a round you go. They don't know right? what the Reader's Digest is yet. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, you can't even say Cliff's Notes version. It doesn't yeah, even work. Right. What, is, what is the? What is, All right, so let me give you the short version. So the short version is that um, the players, if they want to declare for the NFL draft before doing so, they can they could they could be put into the college advisory board. And what they do is they go through and analyze where they feel a player would be valued in the NFL draft. You're a first round player. You're a second through third round player. You are a fourth through seventh round player, or we don't feel you would be drafted, or five, fifth through seventh or undrafted, right? Yep. So you give players grades. But here's what happens. They do them as they come in, right? So the first 50 kids, right, they rank 20 of them as being, you know, rounds one through three, but then 100 more kids apply. They don't change the previously graded players. They do them as they come in. So you could have... 50 guys rated in the top three rounds and they never change it right so these guys that get these grades they're not really indicative of where their skill level is because the system sucks so (laughs) it sucks their system is terrible they don't wait and then grade them all at once they grade them as they come in and they don't change because kids need to know what they're declaring right where they would probably be going right yeah because it'd be great for him to go back to school for another year it would be i think it would be but that's not what happened no he could be serviceable. I think he could be serviceable. Because there's always a reason why guys don't go undrafted. He has questionable off the field issues. He's not big enough. He's not fast enough. He has trouble with this. He has trouble with that. There's always there's, there's way too many question marks than positives going on with the guy. I understand that. We understand that. We've talked about it uh, at nauseam. This kid has all the physical tools. He checks the box for physical tools. He's fast. He's explosive. He's strong. He has things you can work with with him. Mm-hmm. All right? He, he has trouble with his knee bend. You're going to have a guy working with him all the time. It's fascinating that you're bringing these up because doesn't this sound like the profile of Oshawn Joseph? It does. It's it fascinating does. that they would take two players with similar issues. Well, then you got one guy to work with both of them. Well, no, I'm just saying, doesn't it, doesn't it kind of pull the curtain back on what type of player they're looking for, what they're willing to accept as a problem with a player? I'm interested in going back and reading Matt Milano's draft profile now. If he had a similar, has trouble with his knee bend, uh, not great in coverage, you know, and then they worked with him for a year, and then he replaced the vaunted Ramon Humber. (laughs) Ramon Humber, who I forgot even was on the team last year. Okay, are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. Okay, we'll go to positives versus negatives. Strength versus weakness. Okay. Right. Uh, strength. Uh, no, give me his weaknesses. I want to hear okay, weaknesses. weaknesses. Needs to add a little more size to his frame. Can be outmuscled by size. Hand usage is inconsistent. Needs That's to his... needs to improve the art of discarding blockers. Just average at punching and shedding to keep himself clean uh, in take on situations. Bad habit of ducking into crushing tackles rather than seeing the hits. Tightly wound with average change of direction talent can improve his path to per, um, to uh, perimeter to avoid traffic around him. 
his uh, here's the bottom line. Ready? Undersized for the linebacker spot, extremely tough and aggressive, a little tight hipped, and might uh, struggle to finish tackles that aren't right in front of him. But he brings as much pound for pound force behind his tackles as anyone in the draft. Productive player with good instincts and a nose for the ball. He has value as a 4 3 or 3 4 will. Um, he should be a top contributor in coverage on special teams. I love watching him on tape. You just wish he was a little bigger or could hit harder. You ready? Mm -hmm. You ready for this? Yeah. Needs to feel the run flow a little better. Can get bogged down by foot traffic. Runs with tight hips and lack of knee bend. Needs to play with charged up hands in take-ons. Poor take-on technique loses the gap. Inconsistent coming to balance in the open field. Hard charging pursuit will overflow leverage. Leaves feet early rather than closing to strike. Too many shoulder tackle attempts. Slow response to zone cover duties. Sounds a lot like Matt Milano, with the exception of the zone cover thing. Yes, They're yes. talking about coverage. They, they don't really talk about coverage. In, Inside in linebacker right prospect in either an odd or even front with the potential to compete at a SAM and a 4-3. Dotson has good size and explosiveness, but his stat sheet production didn't always match actual on-field impact. He can diagnose and move quickly in the first phase, but struggles to adjust the blocks. Either taking on or slipping with consistency. He will need to improve his hands, tackling, and zone awareness more than a traits-based special teamer with a low-end backup potential. Yeah, that's funny. It's Bill a lot Stan like Matt Milano. Yeah, I think he's onto something here. That's, that's amazing. Funny. That's funny. I can't believe it. they copied and pasted it. But I'm just curious because Milano was Milano was profiled as somebody who. <laughs> at, at draft could have played middle linebacker, right? I know the yes. profile lists him as a 4-3 or a 3-4 on the outside, but the fact is he could have played middle, right? And now here we are again, and you take another guy who played middle, and you're saying, well, we can kick him outside. Be fine outside. Is it, the, is it along the same lines of you want the quarterback, right? You know how the Bills keep seeming to add guys who were former quarterbacks. Yeah. You had a Knox former quarterback. You had Sills former quarterback. Oh, and then they moved them because they, they had an the overall them. understanding. Of right. The well, look at the guys in playing the middle. Oh, you played middle. Okay. Well, we, you can play outside. Oh, you played. Okay. Yeah, you can play outside. Do you think there's a? Do you think there's a reason behind that? I think. They or do you think it just happens, Dan? Like, I think. Ah, uh, that's a that's a great point. I'm not sure if that, they purposely do that. Um, what they're what they're getting is knowledgeable players. Uh -huh. You're not getting these horses that are like oh, oh me big strong. You know? <laughs> um, so the the idea of it is okay. We're gonna get guys that are that could pick up what we want to do. All right, and who better to pick up an offense than a middle linebacker who has to know everyone's job? Who better than a quarter, former quarterback who know has to know everyone's job? But it's fine. Uh, it's interesting to see because they've seen it play out in front of them. If you compare Milano and him, now I'm not comparing them at all. Just the draft profiles. Mm -hmm. They're eerily similar. Yeah. So if they think they've done it before, they can coach guys up. Yeah. They're convinced. They Same that. thing. So if they could do that, you know, maybe they found a guy, you know, a, Milano's hips were a little tight. I don't think anybody would talk about his coverage skills now. Right. They're phenomenal. No. Yeah. Um, I mean, he went toe to toe with Gronk for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. um, Something the Bills have been asking a lot. Of it's the, yeah, they they brought in so many players to try and do that. So if the, if that's the process that they want they want to go with, then it's looking up for both Joseph and Dotson mm -hmm. as possible guys to make it. Now, is he he's, he wasn't drafted, so he's under the radar. You can put him on the practice squad. Not right. a big deal. Right. Uh, while he develops, that's fine. I think it's just very peculiar how you take guys with similar profiles and just say, well, we'll try this again. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, let's just, we'll try this again. I mean, you're successful in coaching the first one. Yeah. So I get it. That's fascinating. Why well, it's fascinating. Bill's fan. That's a sneaky, sneaky good one. Sneaky. That's sneaky. I see. I underestimated, I your, <laughs> I underestimated your sneaky sneakiness. That's Hawaiian punch. <laughs> Never underestimate the sneaky. <laughs>